Hi, oh, folks. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right. Well, we are getting pretty deep into the migration from Jira to GitHub issues this week, which is generally not the most fun thing one could spend one's time doing but uh anyway i think we're making some headway on it um well uh there's probably going to be a period where we're trying to get all of our processes moved over and projects are kind of uh paused on that but we're sorting through it as fast as we can uh, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, still hope we can get emojis out for too long. Uh, that is, uh, something that I think everybody's heard before, but, um, still can look pretty good. Uh, other things, the first GLTF maintenance release is out, um, as the default viewer, and we anticipate there will be at least one more of those. Um... I will let uh, I will let Dave talk a little more about the kind of near-term graphics roadmap if uh, if he's up for that. Sure, I'm gonna just ramble now. Sure. Okay. Uh, so if you're following how our branching strategy is changing, moving from the Dirt viewer system to uh, GitHub, you've probably noticed that we've got some branches under the uh, release slash prefix. Uh, one of those is GLTF main 2 and one of them is materials featurette. Um, so those will become the new, uh, like if you've been following Dirt Viewer 601, um, that is now uh, releases slash Make sure I'm saying that right. Uh, it's like release slash uh, GLTF main two. Um, crud, hold on, my headset's running out of batteries. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay, back. Sorry, I had to swap batteries. Um, yeah, that's right, Dave. Um, so we're going to try something in, uh, in the, in the beginning of this year for, for Q1 where instead of stopping maintenance work to go work on features, we're going to have a featurette branch, um, that has some low hanging fruit that we can tackle post materials project. Uh, things like the the PBR terrain that Cosmic has been working on, uh, uh, mirrors which Keynes has been working on, um, and might look at uh, supporting our first GLTF extension, um, which would end up being transmission IOR, uh, and also looking at 2K textures uh, as an early investigation because now that the texture streaming system doesn't download the full res all the time, we can probably get away with supporting 2K textures. Um, but we'll need to get some regions built out to make sure that doesn't turn into uh, a uh, memory suck. Um, but with any luck, if that works out, then, then we'll have those developed in a branch that is shipping more regularly than once a year. Um, and we'll just have the features behind feature flags if they're not ready to go out. So we're going to try doing it that way. Uh, and hopefully that'll avoid the integration hell that we tend to have when we go work on features for a long time and then try to release an RC that um, hasn't really been shipped in half a year. Um, and hopefully that'll make it easier for 
your third party viewers to follow on without the monster emerges from hell. Uh, I'm kind of curious what, what y'all think of that plan. It's like, a, oh yeah, that sounds good. Or like, oh no, it, we're never going to ship anything again because we got all our eggs in one basket. Pause for comment. Yeah, we very much want to do smaller releases. Um, there's a long history of trying to make the uh, feature as small as possible and then discovering things that we, oh, well, really can't leave this out. And by the time we've added the minimum necessary stuff, then it's turned into another giant release. But um, we we have hope, and we're still trying to do that. <laughs> Yeah, and it's one of those things where, like, if I look at the maintenance backlog now, and I look at some of those featurettes I just mentioned, um, and I think if we asked a resident, which would you rather us work on, they're going to say the featurettes. Like, yeah, there's bugs, but, you know, having PBR terrain is much more valuable than, um, like, having... Uh, the reflection probes implicitly become physics shape type none when you check the box on a child prim. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to just punt on that indefinitely. Um, but it would be the same people working on it. So hopefully what will happen is people will be able to take a break from maintenance uh, and switch to feature development, and then when they get stuck on an issue with feature development or if they're waiting for QA or something, then they can tackle maintenance and, and have it all happen in code that's not diverging from one another because it, it becomes impossible after you refactor the system to go back and fix a bug in a maintenance branch related to that same system and think, well, okay, I'm going to fix it now, but then when we integrate, I'm going to have to fix it again. All right. Uh, so, what's uh, what's going on in other viewer land? Is, uh, is PBR getting out as kind of the default for other viewers at this point, or is that still in the works to some extent? Yeah, I know Firestorm was still waiting for fixes on some issues. Uh, and with the shuffle from Jira to GitHub, some of those might have been delayed.
Sounds good. Uh, oh, a uh, question on, on another topic. Uh, I think someone at this meeting in the past reached out about a possible contribution contribution to support RLV. Uh, is that uh, is that something that's in the works currently? Oh, coffee, that's you. Oh, kitty. Okay. Um, how uh, how how are you feeling about it at this point? We're definitely interested. I don't know uh, how everybody else's schedule is looking these days. Uh, okay, well, if, if there's additional context you want to provide, that would be great. I mean, I, I have already seen the, the existing documentation out there about uh, uh, kind of what it's all about. So um, I don't know if there's, I think, uh, who's it, Mar uh, Marine, if you have the right name, uh, sent me some pointers on that. Um, I know there's a I know there's a few things floating around out there already, but um, yeah, if there's if if there's any additional info that I wouldn't have seen already, or it, it just explains kind of what you're thinking about for the for the contribution, that would be that would be great. Uh, yeah, well, uh, just as we were saying, smaller is definitely better. You're thinking about kind of breaking it down into kind of chunks based on sort of different functional areas or something like that? Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, definitely open to chat about it any time, and uh, really uh, be very interested. Uh, I know that's a fairly frequently requested thing we've had over the years. People would like to have uh, compatibility across different viewers. Uh, yeah, Katie, okay, you can send it to me. That's the best uh, place to start. Make sure it gets to anybody else who needs to be looped in. Yeah, well, it's possible that we wouldn't actually want to ship a viewer until we had, uh, you know, full support. Um, but it might still it might still be helpful to, you know, have the work broken down into into smaller chunks so we can uh, kind of validate things a piece at a time. Um, those are kind of separate questions. Right, and. Like like one of the things we're looking at doing for for things that take a long time to finish uh, is instead of doing it all and like getting it done and then shipping it, um, that we hide stuff behind a debug setting. Um, so you could do the same thing for RLV, just add a debug setting for like RLV enabled true false. Um, and then we could decide if we want to 
turn that on in whatever state it happens to be in by default or um, wait until it's completely finished before we turn it on by default. Awesome. Yeah, there, there would certainly have to be uh, it have to be behind some kind of a setting because it people would might or might not be running with it in their particular session. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's see. I had one other kind of open question for the committee, and then uh, we can move on to uh, any other questions or topics people had. Uh, question I had is just kind of want to do a quick poll on uh, avatar declouding. Um, I've I've heard some anecdotal reports that there have been more problems, like with things like you know, Avatar staying clouded for a long time, taking longer to fully res. Uh, what what are uh, you all seeing? Is it, do you think it's, you know, getting worse, about the same? Uh, Jenny, you say over the holidays, so you think that uh, the issues you were seeing have resolved since then? Better this week. Okay, so maybe it could be related to something that's gotten changed at AWS. Any other opinions? Seems about the same for the rest of you. All right. Well, that's all I got. Uh, any other questions, topics, concerns, observations about the weather? It's going to rain. Uh, yeah, I have not talked to the, the Lovence people or however you say that, uh, but my understanding is that they are interested in getting on the TPV list, so I'll, I'll have to ping uh, my, my internal contact about that. Uh, 
Uh, obviously, if they're on the TPV list, that would be subject to the usual uh, requirements. Yeah, I always get fuzzy on where the line is with LGPL and what source you have to release. Yeah, well, of course, the uh, the TPV list is is uh, entirely open source, and uh, there there are uh, you know license terms for some of the some of the uh, code that uh, feeds into those too. Okay, well, thanks. Yeah, as I say, I don't have any first-hand knowledge about this, but I will uh, I'll ask around.
Yeah, it's one of those things where there's a lot of stuff I'm pretty sure Veer and I both want to say right now, but we need to dot some I's and cross some T's. Um, I'm a little bit late today, sorry. Hi, everybody. But what is the thing holding Second Life back from actually adding in, like, segments of RLV to its viewer? There are so many ways to use RLV that have nothing to do with adult content, and yet a lot of people use third-party viewers because they want those functions. Um, is there any... Oh, we, yeah, we, we are interested in incorporating RLV support. We were just, uh, uh, just chatting with, with Kitty about that. Um, basically we, uh, you know, I think we just need the code. That would be fantastic <laughs> because as I mentioned in yesterday's meeting, I just added RLV to my bottles and cups. There's nothing at all about that. It's just to keep them attached to the right hand. But yeah, and you also might have CSL viewer can use that. You also might have seen some of the blog posts around leaning into spicy. They weren't. Yeah, we weren't really sure if that's. I did say that when I saw one of them, um, it came up in Plurk, and I did say, uh, hopefully that means RLB implementation, but just wasn't sure. But thank you. Thanks. That's great. Yeah, I mean, we know that people are interested in, in RLV for a range of reasons, um, and, you know, from adult to, to not at all adult, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I understand the concern that we would want to sort of implement it wholesale if we were going to have it, because otherwise you are going to get uh, sort of, you know, random content breakage, some stuff will work and some won't. would help with also the understanding of people to uh, understand that ROV doesn't mean they're suddenly owned by somebody or locked or sexualized <laughs> because a lot of the time that's what happens when somebody even dares mention it everybody thinks it's only one direction that it can go in not the others and it's quite funny to have to convince them otherwise. Right, exactly that. The wardrobe systems and things like that are ROV. Even even dressing um, models in stores and things can be used with ROV functions, making it easier. Yep. Um, you don't have to sell it. <laughs> We're sold. We're just working through the process. That sounds like a good feature request, muting group chats. Um, you can write that up on the feature request portal, which is not on JIRA now, but it's, it's where is it now? Uh, Kenny? Feedback.secondlife.com. And yes, I would welcome a feature request like that, please. Yep. Yeah, I, I say it in the content feature or the uh, the content creators user group, but um, that really is the best way to get a relatively large group of Lindens to look at your feature request. Um, we we meet at least once a week. Uh, with a group of linens from a variety of teams to, to go over that list. And a lot of, a lot of things make it in the viewer that way.
Yes, the planar texture alignment is in fact broken. Which is a shame, because when it works, it's almost magic. Um, no, we're, we're, we're not going to put development resources into PBR fallbacks because by the time we got something working, all the third party viewers would support PBR and that would be a moot point. Yeah, I don't think that's good. Um, why do you want to keep supporting? Um, can't run it in what way? Uh, because it works all the way back to GL3. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's tough to draw the line. We obviously try to support a, 
a lot older hardware than your typical uh you know game ever would but we do at some point say well you know it's time to move on if you can get a better computer out of a serial box then uh you know maybe uh maybe the, the time has come um so we can't guarantee sort of backwards compatibility back to the dawn of time. Still took 32-bit. Ouch. Yeah, that's one we finally gave up on. Yeah. Um, if it runs, but it's crashing often, that's that's something I'd want to look at. If if it or, or if it reports that it's got GL 3.1. I think I think 3.1 is where we actually draw the line. I can't remember it's 3 over 3.1. Um, and it doesn't run, then then I'd want to look at it and make sure that it runs. But I think that's the answer is making sure it, um, everybody runs and sees the same thing rather than trying to cludge backwards compatibility hacks because there's nothing there's nothing particularly technically exciting about uh, the PBR materials with the, and the compatibility mode as far as like what it requires of of the computer that's running it. Um, I mean, if they've got $20 PCs, what kind of phones do they have? I don't know if we have anybody here who's working on the mobile viewer. Um... Yeah. Um, yeah. All I know is that it's out in uh, kind of a limited, limited release alpha, and they're they're uh, collecting feedback on it, and you know, fixing fixing issues as they get raised there. That is a good question. What is the process for getting a region updated on a DD? Uh, repeat the question. Uh, Kitty was asking um, how to get a uh, testy region updated on the beta grid. Oh, yeah. Is that not done through support? I don't actually know the process there, but I assume there's there is one. Uh, 
And uh, Steam is a no-go. Yeah, I mean, without going into detail about any particular platform, um, you know, the uh, outfits like like Steam and, and app stores tend to have a lot of specific requirements around uh, types of content and um, method of monetization and things like that. Uh, and SL is a very, very atypical application. Yeah, and it's it's. You also might have seen different stuff going through the news about like Epic versus Apple. Um, if you don't build your uh, business model around particular app stores, um, transitioning to them becomes. Uh, just an all-around bad idea. I was just about to, to ask that to Alison. What, is anybody from Second Life actually interested in speaking to the people at Twitch about uh, their rules cutting us out blanketly because it seems ridiculous. I mean, we know how to be in enclosed environments in studios or, you know, um, boxes in the sky, whatever, that uh, adult content won't interfere. But they seem to think that we have no control and that there's always um, adult attachments running past the screen. But nobody seems to be advocating for second life and i thought that maybe linden lab actually contacting twitch and saying what and why would be a really good step uh, I, I i suspect that we have had folks talking to twitch but it's not uh it's not anybody on my team so i don't uh, really have any details on that my advice is to use youtube We do have a lot of people posting uh, SL videos on YouTube. They want to be able to Twitch because they Twitch for everything else. Like you've got uh, live music people that are that are Twitch streaming, but having to Twitch stream their real life selves or just a an image rather than their Second Life avatar performing to an audience live in SL. Uh, that's just an unfair you know, thing that Second Life is, are having to be stopped versus any other content out there. It's kind of a bit unfair um, when you've got real life people doing crazy things like appearing naked to make more money or doing all these things. And that's not necessarily the reason people want to twitch. A lot of Second Life is used to actually stream themselves creating content it was wonderful you know you could go and watch somebody making a dress making shoes doing skins in substance painter things like that now we just can't yep um, yeah no I, I definitely hear you obviously it's uh it's twitch's call uh what what uh they are aren't going to allow on their platform. I think we should integrate with YouTube. Well, there are start a live what, you mean like integrate live streaming into YouTube or something like that? Yeah. Huh, yeah, that might be interesting. Um, you know, obviously people can and do post SL videos to YouTube. I think they even do live streaming. streaming to YouTube, but they must be using some external tools to help them with that. Yep. I mean, you're going to get demonetized, but that'll be on a stream by stream basis.
you might want to look at the number of views, people that you think are Twitch streamers. Um, like most successful Twitch streamers will mirror their Twitch streams to YouTube. Um, and they'll either just copy a recording of the stream to YouTube or they'll um, do an edited version and post that to YouTube. But take a look at the view numbers and um, some of them talk about how much money they make. Um, I strongly recommend if you want to stream videos of SL or post videos of SL in a way that you can engage with the community and maybe, maybe make a little money, go to YouTube. I think the issue is that the audience is on Twitch that wants the kind of content that they feel that they're sharing. You like, you know, they already had the audience on Twitch. Yeah, and, and, Twitch and again, an audience is on Twitch, um, but the audience will follow the creator. Like, like, more than anybody else, the content creators get to choose which platform is, su is successful. I watch a lot of streamers on YouTube and none on Twitch. plans based on Second Life being on Twitch. But if we could get that unstuck, that would be great. All right. Well, we've got a few more minutes left. Any other uh, questions or things you want to kick around? All right, well, if there's nothing else, I guess we're going to wrap it up. Have a good weekend, everybody, and thanks for coming by. Yep, thanks, folks. Thank you, everyone.